Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be doing a beauty rewind that will be focusing on the best and worst concealers of this past year. If that's something that interests you then make sure you keep on watching and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. <laughs> love filming these videos because it gives me the chance to go back through some of my makeup and figure out what I really loved and what I continue to use and what products I didn't really like that much and what's kind of been gathering dust in my collection. In terms of concealers, I feel like there have been a ton of new launches this past year, very similar to foundation. I think it's been a year of complexion products essentially. Yeah, there's been a ton of eyeshadow palette launches, but I feel like there has been a real focus on good foundation launches as well as good concealer launches. And to be entirely honest with you, I am indifferent when it comes to price point. I think there are amazing concealers at really affordable prices, and there are also amazing concealers at really high price tags. So the decision will always be up to you where you want to invest your money, but it's nice to know that there are options for both sides of the scale. Before I dive into all of the concealers today, I do want to put a disclaimer on this video as I do with all of my rewind videos to basically say, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Makeup is very personal and what may work for me may not work for you and vice versa. The other important housekeeping item that I do need to mention is about my skin type because sometimes that does play into what products may work and what products might not. So for me, I generally have an oily complexion. Sometimes it does become combination skin, especially in the winter time, which means that the perimeters of my face become dry, but my T-zone, so the center of my face, does stay oily. I deal with rosacea right around this area here. I have enlarged pores, acne, acne scarring, sensitive skin, and texture. The joys of problematic skin. While I do have a lot of issues that I'm dealing with with my skin, there is a positive sign because it means I become very, very picky with the type of makeup that I put on my face, and there's only certain things that will work with my very finicky skin. And those are the items that I am going to be talking about with you today and I feel like we should start at the beginning with the best concealers of the year and we'll work our way to the not so great ones. To start off I want to talk about an OG concealer that I absolutely adore. It has been a ride or die for me. I don't know why more people don't talk about this one but it is the concealer from NARS. This is the Soft Matte Complete Concealer. These little tubs of glory are phenomenal for giving you a full coverage concealer. It will mask any darkness that you have underneath your eyes. It's also really great to cover up blemishes. Just get a bit of a concealer brush, pat it around your face, and then very gently blend it in either with your brush or with your finger. I use both options, but this concealer is so blendable. It does stay matte throughout the day, which I appreciate, but it does not look dry on the skin, which is something else I also appreciate, especially for some somebody who has textured skin just like myself. You do need to set this concealer, so make sure you use a good loose powder or a good setting powder when you are using this product. Otherwise, it is gonna smear around a little bit. If you're able, I would highly recommend you invest in the NARS concealer. I think it is wonderful. Another concealer I find myself reaching for quite often is this one here from Shiseido. It is the Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Concealer. I do have mine in the shade Light and I love the way this goes on my under eye area. I love the hourglass applicator because it does hug the contours of your eyes so you can easily dispense product in just about every crevice and not need to stress. It is a wonderful concealer that does hydrate your under eye area. It doesn't budge, it doesn't sink into fine lines. I find it does a really great job of covering up darkness. I think it's just an all around solid concealer concealer. Another slightly more expensive concealer that I'm going to talk about is this one here from Becca. This is the Aqua Luminous Concealer. I've got mine in the shade Light and I have really been enjoying this one. I've only been using it for the last couple of months, so that's full transparency. I haven't had that long to play around with it, but I do really 
like what it does to my under eye area. It is very, very hydrating. So if you do have dry skin, I would certainly recommend this one for you. It's not going to accentuate any dry patches. It does have relatively decent coverage, but I would suggest you build it up. So lay a little bit of product down, blend it out, and then add some more on top until you get the coverage that you really want. This product leaves your skin looking like skin, which is something else I can really appreciate about this. So on those later makeup days, I think this would be a great concealer to dive into. And now I'm going to turn to some of the more affordable concealers that are phenomenal. And the first one I'm going to talk about is this one here from Rimmel. It's the Stay Matte uh, Soft Matte Concealer. This concealer will do a really good job of covering up darkness underneath your eyes. It is more of a medium coverage rather than a full coverage though. I've tried to build this up a couple of times, but every time I have done that, it has begun to look a little bit cakey underneath my eyes. So if you don't struggle with really dark circles and you just want something to even your complexion out, then this concealer might be a good option for you. If you are looking for something a little more full coverage, stay tuned because I have other ones I'm going to talk about. It does set pretty quickly, but I would still recommend you put a powder on top of it just to make sure it's cemented in and it's not going to putter around throughout the day. Another concealer that is new to me, but it might not necessarily be new to the brand is this one from Catrice. It is the One Drop Coverage Weightless Concealer. For anybody who has really dry skin, I think you might actually enjoy this concealer just because it's very, very liquidy. The consistency is quite watery. As you can see, it comes in a dropper and you only need a couple of drops in your under eye area and it's going to take you a long way. I would suggest starting off slow and building up to the coverage that you need. But this concealer just sits so beautifully underneath the eyes. I also like it to cover up blemishes around my face just because it's so thin and it's not going to look textured on top of any bumps that you might have on your skin. If you have oily skin, I would say set this concealer to make sure you cement it in place. Otherwise, it is prone to do a little bit of shifting here and there. It didn't really settle into any of my fine lines, but I also don't have heavy fine lines underneath my eyes. So take that with a grain of salt, but I have really enjoyed using this product. Up next in my best of category is this concealer here from Milani. This is the Conceal and Perfect Long Wear Concealer. It actually took me a while to find this concealer here in Canada. Milani has just started hitting the shelves over the last couple of years in Canadian drugstores. So be patient. Hopefully it will arrive in your local shopper's drug mart or in your local Walmart, which is where I typically find a lot of Milani products. I picked up the shade Nude Ivory and for my light complexion, it is a perfect concealer color. This bad boy is very, very, very full coverage. So it is going to do an amazing job of canceling out any darkness that you have underneath your eyes. It's great for covering up blemishes as well, but go in with a very light hand because on the flip side, this concealer is prone to settling into fine lines, which is something that I've experienced with the product, but I have learned to use the less is more rule of thumb with this particular product. I see tons of beauty YouTubers out there who do makeup tutorials in particular, who build huge triangles underneath their eyes with concealer. They use a lot of product. With something like this, I kid you not, you just need to focus on the areas where there is darkness and blend it out from there. The more of this product you use, the cakier it's gonna look because it is so full coverage. But in my experience, I've really enjoyed this. And the last concealer that I'm gonna talk about in my best of category is actually the perfect bridge concealer into my not so great concealers of this past year because I like it for certain things and I don't like it for other things. And the concealer I am talking about is this one here from CoverGirl. Yes, I do have two shades. This is the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. If you ask me, I think CoverGirl has some of the best complexion products at the drugstore. 
for. When it comes to foundations, I tend to gravitate towards some of their offerings as opposed to other brands. And so when they came out with these concealers, I thought, yes, these are going to be amazing. And initially, I did really like them. But the more I started to wear these throughout the winter or the colder months in Canada, the more I realized they clung to a lot of my dry patches. So for me, these concealers weren't great underneath my eyes. It accentuated my texture, they looked cakey, they settled into my fine lines. It just didn't look cute, even though the coverage was wonderful. And because the coverage was so good, I decided to just use this for spot correcting any acne that I might have. And that's how I was able to repurpose these concealers. I use them for spot concealing and are you ready for this? I also use these concealers to prime my eyes anytime I am going to do a bright eye look. I don't know what it is about the formulation of these concealers, but man, do they lay down an amazing eye base. This has such a tacky base to it that any shadow that I put on top of it just sticks. It's like a magnet and it doesn't crease throughout the day. So for me, this is great for spot concealing and it makes for an amazing eye base, especially if you have veiny eyes or you have discoloration in your eyes and you need to create more of a black blank canvas, I highly recommend this concealer. It is spectacular for that purpose. And now we're going to move on to the not so great concealer category. And I'm going to talk about a concealer that I don't think is really new for this past year, but it's been around for a little while. It comes from Benefit. This is the Boing concealer. It's the industrial strength concealer. So this is the full, full coverage concealer. And when I say full coverage, I mean full cake face. If that's something you look for in a concealer, you might love this product. If you're searching for something that is going to look a little more natural on your skin, then this is so not worth the investment. And that's the category I fall into. Personally, this looks really cakey underneath my eyes. It accentuates my texture. It grabs onto dry patches and it settles into my fine lines. So for me, this formulation is just a little bit too thick. I need something that's going to have a slightly waterier consistency. So unfortunately, this one did not work out for me. And that's why it's in my worst of category. The other concealer I really tried to love because I thought it would be complimentary with some of my foundations was this one here from L'Oreal. This is the Infallible Full Wear Concealer. And I thought this would be very similar in formulation to my L'Oreal Fresh Wear foundation. It's another infallible product. I find the consistency of it is just a little bit too thick for what I would like. So blending can be a little bit challenging. This can certainly look a little bit cakey on the skin. It grabs onto texture, dry patches. Um, it's just not something that I've really enjoyed using. I've tried it with several different products. I've even tried layering this underneath my foundation to give it a fighting shot. And every time I use it, I just felt like it made my foundation look yucky. So unfortunately, this is another one that just did not work out for me. If you typically like a full coverage concealer, something that is going to completely blank out any darkness on your face, then you might really enjoy this next product. And it's the Huda Beauty Concealer. She calls it the Overachiever Concealer. And I think that is a very accurate name because every time you try to use this, it tries to do more than what it should. It is definitely full, full coverage. Um, personally, I do not like this applicator. I find I have to clean it after every single use. I mean, yeah, it's nice and cooling. I enjoy that aspect of it, but every time I squeeze product out of this tube, it manages to just jump out of this little hole in the middle and it lands either in my eye or on some other part of my face that I did not want it to end up in. So not only 
only do I find the packaging problematic, but I also don't like the texture of this concealer. The formulation is a lot thicker than what I typically like to use. As you can see, it's not really budging. Um, it definitely leaves your face looking a little more cakey, I'd say. It does settle into fine lines, and this has a tendency of shifting quite a bit throughout the day. I have tried it with a ton of different foundations, even with the Huda Beauty foundation, and I just haven't been able to make it work. This also really highlights my texture. It kind of sits in my pores. It doesn't really conceal them well. I just don't like this product, and that's why I'm putting it in my worst of category. If you watch my Beauty Rewind video, video on the best and worst foundations of this past year, then you know I am not a fan of the new Maybelline Superstay foundation. It just did not work out for me, but I really wanted to give the concealer a good go just in case the formulation of this would be different. But I find the formulation of this is very similar to the foundation formulation. And so every time I would wear it, it would just grab onto my texture, it would accentuate my pores, it sank into my fine lines. I had some difficulty blending it out just because it is a thicker formulation. It actually feels a little more uh, moussey to me. Um, and just the cakiness underneath my eyes, it wouldn't wear very well throughout the day. Even when I would set it with a powder, I noticed that it would shift quite a bit and redness would very quickly start to peek through. So for me, it was just another concealer that did not work out. If you happen to love this concealer, I am really really happy for you but unfortunately this one did not work out for me and the last concealer that I'm adding in my worst of category is unfortunately another really popular one it comes from elf this is the 16 hour camo concealer this is another product that I picked up a few months ago and I've really been playing around with it I've tried it underneath foundations on top of foundations and while I like the coverage it provides, it's just a really thick formulation. I find this concealer really highlights textured skin. It enhances dry patches, which is something nobody wants from their concealer. And unfortunately, it doesn't have the best staying power, at least on my oily skin. So unfortunately, I've had to put it in my worst of category. When I genuinely say I have tried really hard to like the last five concealers that I've talked about, I mean, I have really tried to like them. I find different ways to use them as I did with the CoverGirl concealer, but for one reason or another, they just didn't work for my skin. So as you can see with the concealers, there is a really good range between expensive ones and more affordable ones. So whatever your budget is, I think you can find a really great concealer for yourself. And now I wanna turn the floor over to you and ask you the question question. What have been some of your favorite concealers of this past year? What worked and also what didn't work? Share the knowledge with everybody in the comment section and let's help each other save some money. And that's going to do it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know the drill. <laughs> Give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. If you want to keep up with me outside of YouTube, you can always do that by following me on all of my social media which I will link for you in the description box below. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you are all having an amazing day no matter where you are in the world. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!